Fastener's cat. In our ICU crash course, we're talking about care of the critically ill, specifically oxygen delivery and ventilation. Supplemental oxygen with nasal cannula around two to four liters is where we usually start. High flow nasal cannula is different than your regular nasal cannula and can provide temporary support. The Venturi mask is the most accurate way to give non-invasive oxygen support. It's the mask that has the little colored filters at the bottom. If your patient has gone through the cannula and venturi mask quickly, oxygen titration is still deteriorating, uh, get someone who can intubate or make the decision to intubate quickly. For our coronavirus infected patients, they're finding that they failed the BiPAP method and have poor outcomes due to the delay. So anytime that invasive ventilation is needed, it should be provided without hesitation. Those with COVID-19 seem to require the ventilator to be set at a higher level of PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure. This setting is what forces the alveoli to open to allow gas exchange. On someone with a different issue requiring ventilator, PEEP is usually set around four to six. For our patients with COVID-19 and ARDS, the ventilator PEEP is going to be set sometimes as high as 20 or so. Now, there are Four basic modes of how invasive ventilation gets delivered, okay? So there's the SIMV mode, which attempts to synchronize with the patient's efforts, if there are any. There's pressure support, PSV, which is triggered by the patient's breathing. There's APRV, which delivers high airway pressure and keeps the alveoli open and working. This is called recruitment, and it appears to be the most useful for patients with COVID-19-related ARDS, as it assists in secretion clearance. Assist control or AC ventilation can either assist the patient or control the patient's breathing. It's easy to titrate to the patient's comfort level and needs, and it's about as comfortable as invasive ventilation can be. After intubation, expect a portable chest x-ray immediately for placement. Note the number on the endotracheal tube at the teeth, and make sure the tube is secured and will not move unless you move it. Make sure you document the settings on the ventilator.